I'm here at downtown Syracuse, New York, standing in front of the Onondaga County Courthouse. This one's a beauty. You got to see this close up. It's said that this courthouse was constructed from 1904 to 1906 as the fourth courthouse in this county. Interestingly, right across from it are these massive buildings with the bell ringing in the bell tower right now. And this one that looks like it had a tower, a peak removed at some point. But these buildings are ultra permanent. And this one is said to replace all the other ones, one of which burned down in a fire. It seems like all courthouse history uh, stories in all the cities have the same thing as far as that goes. Uh, they have a fire involved. But you can see that this one has multiple domes on top. Intense detailing. And the columns at the top are marked with a canthus, which is a biblical symbol. It's the same symbol that was applied or put on the head of Jesus Christ when he was crucified as a symbol of the thorns, which is what the plant actually was. It was, it's translated into English as thorns, but the, the original translation is the word acantha with a K, A-K-A-N-T-H-A. -A and that is signifying that he took on the sins of the world because the top of a column, the column signifies the ruling power and the top of the column is the crown of the column and who that power is. And when he took that curse on that was given in Genesis, it's what was put on his head and it uh, signifies the kingdom or who the kingdom was built by. When the acanthus is on top of the columns, it signifies the ruler of the actual kingdom, at least at the time the building was built. Now, has this building been here far, far longer than 1904, 1906 being built and been here for actually during the kingdom that was prophesied in the Bible as the millennial kingdom? Well, many think that, and if that in fact is the case, then this is a much, much obviously older building and it's marked by the ruler of the kingdom, the one that set that up. And then someone else would have had to come and according to the Bible, that would be Satan's little season when he's released to go deceive the world and they would have to refurbish the building through men that serve him and overtake the building under the guise of light, but in, actual, in actuality in darkness. Now the markings of that event happening, many think to be what's called the mud flood, which actually would have buried the original parts of these buildings. And that's why you now have to step up such a height to get in the front door. Now, much of this is conjecture. You have to use the evidence in front of you. A preponderance of the evidence is really what determines the truth, not what someone tells you. And you can see that on this building, the symbols are prevalent everywhere and can't be disregarded, but just the craftsmanship of this is incredible. You can see on this building, the lion. And what is that a symbol of? When well, the Bible, that was a symbol of Jesus Christ. He was called the lion of the tribe of Judah. So we have the lion and we have the acanthus that was put on his head as a crown. And there's wreaths above that, which is also in the Bible. In addition to the fence that's put on the top called a parapet, which was commanded to be put on the top of buildings in God's law to keep the building free from 
the blood of anyone that would accidentally fall off. The symbols are so important on a building and can't be disregarded. As we get to this side, you can see much better the dome that's up above. And we'll take a look at that from the inside. But you can see all the intense detail work as it goes up to that dome. This is a county courthouse from a time in the early 1900s. That's really a city block long wide just massive and the notion that you really need to have something that huge at a time like that is pretty astounding especially given the fact that these buildings are stone constructions even if the interior is brick it's completely stone uh, all these portions that are hauled in as we look over this fence you can see that the part that would have been covered up is now down below the completely lower uh, another lower floor with that stone obviously being made to be a presentation to the outside it's not like a flat cement or concrete like this is but it's completely normal stone just like would be above a higher part of the building and just how low does that building go obviously that low but these portions here now are covered up that's something called the mud flood that's definitely a case in which the preponderance of the evidence holds out because in every city all over not only north america but the world these buildings have windows that are covered up. Now, some people say, oh, those are basements. Not when you look at them, they're not. They'll, when you dig away from them, most cases, they're gonna have a presentation to the outside as if it was never meant to be underground, but rather the very front of the building. Now, this is not obviously the front, but it's the other side from the front and the front faces to the west. And this town is built just like a European town with canals going through it. On top of this column is a scroll that is opened. And in Revelation, in the Bible, it says who is worthy to open the scrolls. Who is the one that's worthy to open the scroll? No, no one was found to open the scroll and it was the lion of the tribe of Judah that was found worthy to open the scroll. So you see that that scroll is open on top of a column, which is the ruling power. So that column is opening that scroll. And only one had the power to do that, shown in Revelation, is the one who took on the sins of the world with the thorns. And that's what that plant is there, the acantha, which is what was placed on his head when he was crucified and on top of that column that's what that plant is there and you can see the size of those blocks look at the one over that window that runs about eight to nine feet long a foot and a half high and however deep it is a stone like that can weigh You can look up the scale online of how much granite weighs. One square meter by one square meter. It's about 5,000 to 6,000 pounds, depending on, on the stone. Now we're gonna come around here to the other side, working back towards the front. And you can see there's kind of a mezzanine area that's been made here. and the symbols are on all four sides here over the fence they've blocked that off to the lower levels and coming back toward the front now 
we can see this building just surrounded by all the other tremendous buildings seemingly ancient buildings all around and coming in this courthouse building from the lower level through security there's this marble steps up but the grand foyer is actually up a level you can see this is ironwork marble on marble on marble as we step up into this grand room it's incredible marble columns white marble columns and there's people below so i'm not going to film them their tables but they're waiting on it's an active courthouse so they're waiting on court but you can see this grand staircase of white marble goes up and to the right and to the left and these columns are just constructed perfectly as are all the other ones looks like right here a little repair went on from a chip and perfectly perfectly made in a perfect circle machine the weight of that column just would be tons and tons and the front door the main front door is down on this end and it's actually completely blocked off now but you can see the woodwork all has the same acanthus leaves on it with a wreath all the metal work the same thing this building is completely marked by symbols of which have been lost to most everyone but as i explained exactly what the acanthus plant is you can see why this building is marked with such royal symbols and at the top of the marble columns And there's three marble columns here, three on the other side. And up this grand stairway, it's completely marble. It just continues up to another one. Notice the metal work here that just continues up and you can see in this massive building it just keeps going all in marble like this these top pieces the weight of them would just be incredible and once you get up to this level the symbols of the acanthus just continue. That's what is above the light. The capitals of the columns with the open scrolls. And this is just one of many buildings in this downtown that are so ornately done as an old world construction. Right there, that's a campus. And right there is a campus at the top of the column. And just continuing up a marble staircase. Okay. 
We're up a lot of stories now. You can see down just continual. So now here on the top floor, there is a door that goes to the dome, but of course they require permission, but you can see it really well from here. And there's a massive center area courtyard. This building goes around and you can see what this building is constructed of on the interior. At least on this side is a blonde brick. But then there's the massive major dome, the top of the columns all have the same acanthus. And then each dome on each side, small domes, there's four of those in squares over that building in a square pattern. And you can see that we are on the top level And then on the right side, the roof is terracotta, it looks to be terracotta tile. And there would be one also then on this side. As you can see right there. And here on the third floor, you can see the ceiling is outlined with the campus, so is the area around the light on each light all the way down the hallway. And the area above the door on the right and the left of the circle is the same symbol with a, a campus there and in the corners. entire building just decked with royal symbols and marble and what a divine construction just to be able to pull this off just the amount of marble at a time that there wasn't a whole, a whole lot of uh, big machinery or anything like that from when they say the very early 1900s. Coming back, back down into this grand room now, you can see that it just is striking with the contrast of the marble. And the gold metal work. The arches over the elevators. It just continues on in a perfect construction with offices around the outside. And to the top, you see there's a corner structure that's put there with columns again with the canthus on top of those and just the detail on this building you can see the square portions above the wreaths they're all exactly the same all the way back and then continuing out and then above the wreaths you can see the lion symbols are not there for frivolous decoration they have meaning and that is the lion the same one that is of the acanthus the same one that is of the parapet fence on the buildings and many other symbols that really signifies who it was that built this building and built these amazing 
canals in this town that have since been completely covered up with concrete. And the buildings, many of the buildings torn down, wiped out, and replaced with buildings that look like this. But the ones that built this kingdom, I think are very clearly marked on the building. And that carries a lot of ramifications for just what we've been told, what we've been shown, and what is the truth. You can really get the truth of these symbols in the Bible. So therefore, all the rest of the truth should be found there just the same. Not only where we are, at what time we are, but who the King of Kings is and what, just why that is so. Just know there's only one truth, no matter what you think. People can be tolerant and be allowing of everyone. But in the end, there is only one truth. And doesn't it seem like a loving God would leave away and show that truth if in fact he's the one who he says he is he will then make a way for you and if he says ask and you shall receive knock and the door will be open to you then ask him to prove himself to you if that's the case this building building is completely marked by Jesus Christ as being the one who he said he was you're going to bet against that you have to be 100% positive that he's not the one who he said he was having proved that to you by asking him to do so the architecture on its own proves that one to you and although not under that regime now what will happen well it says in the Bible that we're under a time in which we are being deceived and that Satan will deceive all the nations of the world to go up against the camp of the saints. So there obviously is a place in which there's a camp of the saints that we're not being told about. We're gonna explore those things on this channel. This building is just the tip of it. The Onondaga County Courthouse, Syracuse, New York. Hit like and subscribe. I'll see you in the next video.